magazine named them one of the coolest college startups in 2011, and it's being touted as the next MTV for the digital world, and a go-to source for 20-somethings on everything from pop culture content to dream building inspiration and resources. I'm talking about GenJuice.com. So today I'm speaking with GenJuice co-founder Danielle Leslie out of their New York City incubator offices. And thanks so much for being here. Of Welcome course, to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so who is GenJuice? Where did this idea come from? And what can we get when we go to the site? Yeah, well, so uh, we're building GenJuice into the location to go and figure out what's hot, what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and we really want to be a hub for discovery for 20-somethings. Mm -hmm. So if you're a trendy 20-something that's curious about the world around you, you would go to GenJuice. With all the media content that's out there, you know, targeting young adults, what sets GenJuice's content apart from all those other sites? Yeah, um, I would say what we do is we champion other 20-somethings who mm -hmm. are talking about relevant things, who um, have a curious eye to the world. So it's not just about, you know, what are Jay-Z, Kanye, all these big names doing, mm -hmm. but I think we realize that uh, gone are the days when you follow celebrities. Uh, today, like, you're a celebrity, I'm a celebrity, like, we're all celebrities, we're all people that each other follows. I know your co-founder, Ariel Scott, told Inc. Magazine, we realize young people today are less interested in following celebrities and are more interested in becoming big themselves or learning how to better do the thing they are passionate about. Yes. And I found that interesting. I mean, I know that I've kind of taken the initiative to starting the show. You, you have your startup and there's tons of other examples. At the same time that we're still, there's still so much celebrity driven like reality TV and Lady mm. Gaga's got her millions of followers. So I guess where, where, it seems that you do have your pulse on something that maybe the mainstream hasn't caught up with yet. And so yes. what are some more of these examples that you're seeing where people are more about, you know, the development of self and development of community and development of their ideas and not so much of the celebrity side? Yeah, well, I think our, so the kind of our generation, Gen Y, mm -hmm. is known for, um, like, I guess what I live by, which is do what you love mm -hmm. and the money will follow. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to say do what you love and convince the money to follow mm -hmm. because I think we have to take a more proactive role about determining okay how can I turn this into a viable business yeah. um, or maybe there's automated income that I can get from somewhere else while I knit all day yeah. or whatever I like to do um, and so I think I think that belief is kind of driving this this um, generation in addition to having access to the internet uh -huh. where there is a low overhead to start a company where all you need is like a hundred bucks for a domain um, and just some extra time to kind of like doodle and figure things out um, so I think all of those things kind of makes us uh, up-and-comers mm -hmm. and and it's I think a lot more interesting to follow the up-and-comers uh, than to follow someone who's already made it who is kind of not someone who I can relate to on an mm -hmm. everyday basis mm -hmm. and so how has it been to be a not only a woman but a woman of color and a black woman in the tech industry because I'm it might just be me that's not up on game, but I don't see a lot of oh, yeah. black women in the technology world, women period. So what's that experience been like? Um, to be honest, we forget that we are. Mm -hmm. Like we had a conversation one time where we realized people were reaching out to us because we were women of color. Interesting. And we were like, oh yeah, like we are, aren't we? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think, and I think it's kind of based on how um, how I was raised. It's like my mom never put labels on herself. She kind of does her own thing. Um, and so I always carried myself as kind of a summary of my strengths. You know, mm -hmm. I'm Danielle. I'm optimistic. Um, I'm friendly. I like meeting new people. I'm curious about technology um, and the world. Mm -hmm. As opposed to I'm Danielle. I'm African American and I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, if I were to lead with that, mm -hmm. then yeah, people would receive me as, oh, Danielle Leslie, she's black. Put her in a corner. She's a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she doesn't have the confidence to run this but instead they regard me as oh Danielle like she's really cool you know she knows she knows some stuff about technology about young people mm -hmm. um, and so I think in doing that that's helped me kind of shape the way that people view me and interact with me mm -hmm. and I would say the same for Ariel as our CEO you know mm -hmm. it's kind of like when she um, goes into investor meetings I, I see her in action and she's just she's confident she mm -hmm. knows what she's talking about and I mean I think the whole race gender is secondary to that 
I could not let you leave without getting some of your top tips or advice for entrepreneurs or people that maybe have been sitting on a dream for a few years and just need that extra little push to get it out. First one is just go. Like go now and go quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's it's because I had that similar experience where I was in college and then I was working for a startup when I first graduated and I had so many ideas week after week. I'd be inspired and I'd have a new idea and there are so many of them still sitting on a napkin in a dumpster somewhere that mm -hmm. didn't come to fruition. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's the first thing, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like innovate, um, so come up with something, create, so actually execute it, mm -hmm. and um, and then iterate. Build a community, like to find find meetup groups, find other um, young entrepreneurs, go join co-working spaces, whatever you can do to kind of find a group of people mm -hmm. who are have similar goals. A lot of people start these power calls where they've got five people who are kind of in similar positions or maybe a little ahead of them, okay. and they just swap resources. Basically what we did with the Gen Juice meetups in the beginning, jump on the phone once a week, say, this is where I am, this is my goal for the next two weeks, mm -hmm. and in the next two weeks you check back again and say, okay, this is where I am, this is what I need help with. And that way you have like a system kind of pushing you forward. Yeah, helping hold you accountable to your dreams. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Nice. Uh, so I would say definitely going on that crusade to find a mentor would be the last piece of advice. Okay, sounds good. Well, hopefully some of you out there are feeling inspired by this story and are excited to check out genjuice.com. They're going to be launching a new and improved site coming up later this year, so stay tuned for that. And if you didn't know about Gen Juice, now you know. Ooh.